Indeed, uh, the social media is uh, playing a very important role in promoting the tourism industry. To shed the light about the role of the social media in the promotion of the tourism industry, we are very much delighted to have with us over the phone our very dear uh, guest, Dr. Yahya Abdel Eder, our tourism expert. Dr. Yahya, good afternoon to you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Hesti. Welcome back. Welcome, sir. Uh, Dr. Yahya, what is the significance of the social media on the tourism marketing and how to use it in an effective way from your point of view, doctor? Well, currently we're living in a digital age uh, because 70% of global travel is booked uh, online. Yes. And uh, we have to uh, use it effectively, deployment to promote seasonal events. Uh, the Ministry of Tourism need to have a calendar of design. Yes. For example, uh, last week, uh, the, uh, Dr. Anani celebrated the uh, Holy Family voyage to Egypt with uh, mm. His Excellency of the Egyptian Church. Yes. So uh, YouTubers and the bloggers, they need to get invited like 100 days before the event. So well the media and visitors and travelers yes. will be scared capable to come to visit Egypt and uh, record these historical moments. Yes. Uh, Dr. Yahya, what new strategies does social media present uh, nowadays? Well, uh, I, I met Mr. Maggie that was in there, the Secretary of International Tourism Promotion in, in Egypt. Yes. And he talked to me about the plans, you know, like uh, they have a three-year plan. Mm. For example, last week they invited uh, 20 world bloggers from Croatia, Denmark, worldwide. Yes. To show me shade, uh, we have to break them into niche markets, you know, mm. like to get the best of them. Mm. For example, there are who specialize in street food, adventure tourism, mm. mountain trails, folklore, safari, and we need to invite uh, travel mm. writers and the uh, media, you know, like uh, uh, the personalities from the mm. city countries as well. Yes. Uh, Dr. Yahya, uh, Liverpool uh, star, our Egyptian player Mohamed Salah, did uh, post photos of his vacation in Egypt on the social media platforms. What is the impact of these photos and can these photos send a safe image of Egypt to the whole world? Well, really, uh, Salah is that world icon and he's loved and respected worldwide. Yes. Uh, and uh, what he's doing on Egyptian beaches and Alamein and Al Hashish and that mm. on the social media, so pictures that the Biram as well. You know, it goes viral worldwide, and we have to remember that uh, six months ago, Switzerland chose uh, Roger Federer to be their uh, tourism international ambassador. Yeah. I, I don't think that the Ministry of Tourism will do the same contract a lot yes. to promote Egypt and just like not do it like on, on individual basis. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, actually, uh, how do you assess uh, the country's efforts to promote the procession uh, of 22 mummies that made its way through Cairo, shedding the light on the world's reaction towards this unique event that took place here in Egypt? Uh, definitely the Royal Parade that Indeed. has been like, committed on the 3rd of, uh, of April is so memorable to us and to the whole worldwide. We have seen, you know, like the, uh, the effect and the, uh, uh, you know, like the, uh, the recognition worldwide mm -hmm. media about this extravaganza parade. Yes. And I guess the Minister of Tourism, they have to invest in Maestro Nader Abbasi. This event, you know, that was performed once. Mm. And really, this is about to be performed repetitively, like AIDA, and mm. it's going to be performed with the world of characters as well. Yeah. Sir, so, um, actually in an uh, attempt to, to raise the awareness of the archaeological uh, impact while abiding by the coronavirus precautionary measures, a number of virtual tours were conducted within the upper Egyptian temples of Abu Simbel, Ramses II and Nefertari. How far would these virtual tours boost the tourism industry? Well, I know a very good number of uh, professional tour guides in Egypt, mm. in French, in German and other languages. Mm. And uh, during the lockdown, because uh, nobody, you know, like, can get, you know, like, in touch with you, uh, yes. the famous lockdown and all. Yes. So uh, they perform a viral, you know, like, and Zoom meetings, you know, like, with their customers, you know, like, and friends worldwide. Mm. And I, I, I watched some of these uh, Zoom, you know, like, speakers of myself. Course. Mm. And the visitor said that as soon as it's going to be regular and get the flight to yes. Egypt, they will be coming. And some of them already came to do the things that he saw 
you know, like on, on the Zoom meeting. Yes. yes. Uh, so, what is Egypt's most uh, tourist uh, potential uh, from your point of view? Well, actually, you know, the, the, the greatest uh, potential of Egypt, you know, like is from people and their achievements to yes. our time. Uh, for example, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. we had the, uh, the Egyptian exhibition in Bragg and the Czech Republic Kings of the Sun. Yes. This has been performed, you know, like since 2020. And mm -hmm. then we had another, you know, like uh, display of Egyptian archaeological antiquities, uh, the Sunken Sages of Egypt that went on uh, mm -hmm. the world tour for three years. So mm -hmm. we have to display our achievement and our destination and, you know, like uh, the yes. culture, we have a heritage that mm -hmm. the world would like, world would like, they like to come and visit Egypt. Yes. Uh, Dr. Yahya, would you please highlight the efforts of the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities to diversify the country's tourist uh, destinations? Well, you know, like, uh, luckily we have, you know, like a number of new museums that mm. have been uh, managed by the government and some of the private sector, like the one in uh, Gara and Sharm el yes. And uh, again, we have like great excavation through one of the expeditions uh -huh. in the Sakara Necropolis throughout Egypt. Yes. And then last week, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Minister of Aviation opened the Bernice Airport in Southern Red Sea Resort, which will make it accessible, you know. Uh, mm. this, this airport is only 60 minutes away from Saudi yes. uh, destination, yes. and it is 90 minutes away from Cairo. So mm. this is going to generate business from the GCC country uh, direct to Bernice and thus uh, uh, Marsha Alam and mm. you know, like the southern parts of the city. Yes. Uh, Dr. Yahya, how do you view the tourism ministry's policy of integrating beach tourism uh, as well as the cultural tourism as well? Really, it's a very, you know, like inclusive, you know, like uh, presentation of our attraction through archaeological, through religious, yes. through health, through education, our resorts. We have mm. like uh, excellent uh, red sea resorts mm. that's running year round. And uh, shortly, Alamir will join the Red Sea, mm. and it's going to be a year-round resort with it, you know, like sophisticated yes. uh, hotels and articles. Yes. So why the archaeological discoveries in Egypt always dazzle the whole world, and how do you evaluate the efforts exerted to promote them, and how, in your opinion, can we invest in these uh, discoveries? Well, I mean, uh, Egypt historically, you know, like uh, yes. maybe two, three thousand years ago, mm. it was, you know, like uh, uh, mesmerizing the whole world. If you remember, by mm. you know, like the Greek and Roman times, how the emperors of the world would like to come and tour the Nile to move to Aswan, mm. and all of them, you know, like uh, Egyptian kings and the queens, they used to have all the treasures and artifacts, mm. and everybody coming to Egypt would like to. Uh, Yes. get a, a, a catch of some of these until in 1922 we had the same that collection on earth and discovered and that's mm. why it ends up becoming like the, the most you know like prominent king in egyptian history yes so we cannot be talking here about uh, the uh, tourism industry in egypt without talking about the grand egyptian museum the expected the inauguration of the grand egyptian museum and its impact on the tourism industry in the country well, uh, Dr. Anani announced yesterday that 65% yes. uh, of the artifacts of King Tut yeah. are on display now. And we, we remember, we know that it is uh, 50,000, you know, like artifacts. The whole yes. collection of the king was going to be, you know, mm. like displayed under one roof. Yes. So the, uh, the, uh, the Grand Egyptian Museum is a world icon. And uh, I know through world media and friends, you know, like outside Egypt, that lots of travel writers, you know, like and photographers and documentaries, yes. would like to come and do some, you know, like uh, the opening stories to their uh, mm. viewers and audience. Yes. So it's a world landmark and it's going to be the number one brand worldwide mm. for tourism and visitors worldwide. Mm. Uh, doctor, do you believe uh, that uh, the Grand Egyptian Museum would change the tourism map of Cairo? Well, uh, as we historically, we you know, like downtown mm. Cairo was like, you know, like the major attraction of Egypt for visitors to come to the Cairo Museum. And then recently we opened the Al-Fistat Museum for Civilization. Mm. So this is another addition. 
And then the Grand Egyptian Museum will promote highly the Giza Plateau area with its airports, yes. hotels, attractions. Yes. And there's going to be, uh, it's so, uh, so great, you realize that you need at least like three days in yeah. life to uh, go through the attractions of the uh, Grand Egyptian Museum, as we yes. all know. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, what's your expectation here for the inauguration of the Grand Egyptian Museum? And um, of course, we did see how the, the whole world and how all Egyptians as well were impressed by uh, the um, only uh, the parade of the Egyptian kings and queens uh, to the uh, Museum of uh, Civilization. So uh, how do you expect the impact of the inauguration of the Grand Egyptian Museum to be? Uh, well, you know, like the Royal Parade was just like the, the yeah. tip of the iceberg, you know. Mm. This is only one short extent yes. moving like the, uh, the uh, remains of 22 queens and kings of Egypt. Yes. But the, uh, the Grand Egyptian Museum houses over 100,000 artifacts Indeed. that represent Egypt mm. from prehistoric to contemporary. Yes. So really, this is going to be a global extravaganza. And I know that Dr. Anani is uh, assisting, you know, like a world team yes. of media and marketing and promotion, mm -hmm. you know, like to make a great plan for this opening, which is going mm. to go for like weeks and months, inshallah. Yes. So, uh, before wrapping up uh, our uh, interview here and our phone, uh, indeed, you were talking about new destinations and beaches for tourists uh, like uh, Al Alamein City. How can we promote Al Alamein City to be a touristic uh, destination? Indeed, we are uh, having this destination more for uh, maybe internal tourism more than the uh, foreigners. So, how to attract more foreign tourists to go and visit this? beautiful spot in Egypt. Well, you know, like uh, this is uh, uh, part of the, the master plan of the Ministry of Tourism and the Egyptian government. Yes. Because Alamein is moving from the, to be a, a mm. summer resort to be a perennial permanent year-round mm. resort with the establishment of sophisticated hotels, facilities, yes. attractions, Indeed. as well as there's going to be universities, the mm. Luzan Hotel School, uh, the uh, airport of Alamein has mm. been, you know, like... Uh, updated and elevated so and then we'll be, have like cruise lines you know like from uh, from, Milan, mm. from napoli as i know yes. as well as the red bus flights from malpensa and italy uh, and from milano so various flights will be coming from europe yeah. Alamein, and to marsha matru mm. and to the arab as well so we'll have you know like inflows of visitors mm. coming from europe and cruises as well and that's why uh, yes. probably it's going to be regarded one of the top uh, beach resorts in yes. the Mediterranean, like Riviera and Manu. Indeed. Uh, finally, Dr. Yahya, uh, how do you see here the uh, tourism industry in Egypt in the coming period? Uh, indeed, the whole world now is trying to uh, open up and uh, end the lockdown, which were, was imposed, uh, unfortunately, because of the uh, repercussions of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, but with the vaccination and uh, um, all this, w can we uh, start to witness an improvement in the uh, tourism industry in Egypt? Well, uh, definitely there's an increase, you know, like in the tourist arrivals and mm. the hotel occupancies nationwide. Mm. So this is due to the uh, really effective strategy of the government, you know, like for, to increase the level mm. of vaccination. Yes. We have over 50,000 of the workers in hospitality and services and tourism in uh, Hegara mm. and Sharm el Sheikh that have been vaccinated. Mm. And uh, many uh, uh, generating markets, you know, like they don't fly until they are sure that the destination is safe and mm. sound and you know like uh, the facilities and the staff and every everything is secure yes. so this is the number one uh number two we uh, uh we we know like they have our high uh, occupancy rate in, uh, all the way from martha allen mm -hmm. on, on the red sea as well as uh, i live in cairo and i've seen most of the hotels uh, around you know like the river nile they have yes. high occupancy rate and we're starting to see at the airport the arrival of international travel from Europe and city and local visitors as well. Yes, indeed. Uh, Dr. Yahya Abdel Adir, our tourism expert, uh, always a pleasure to have you with us, sir, and to listen to your uh, precious input, indeed.